everybody. Video here for you today. Now I'm going around from list to list, just checking off sites that I want to talk about. Today we're going down the place that is underwater today. This was lost about 20 years ago. It's right in this area right here. But some good excavation work was done right before the waters flooded the site. Here's a dam, the Tishrin Dam, that created this artificial lake. Now, three, four days ago, I made the video on the Natufians and how I thought they were responsible for the building at Gobekli Tepe. It seems that the Natufians, their culture, ran out about 11,600, 11,500 years ago, right at the end of the Younger Dryas. And then Gobekli Tepe starts up right then thereafter, and we really don't have a name for the people. It was the descendants, or it was the Natufians themselves. That is my belief. Here is a site from along the Euphrates River here, right before the flooding started. Let's just read a little. Here's an article from about 20 years ago. It says, in July 1999, floodwaters from the Tishran Dam, 75 miles from Aleppo in northern Syria, inundated Jerf El Amar, the Red Cliffs, one of the world's oldest settlements, dating to 11,600 years ago. And that starts right at the end of the Younger Dryas period. It says, for Danielle Stroder and members of her Franco-Syrian research team, which have been excavating the site since 1995, the loss to archaeology was catastrophic. There's been nothing similar found in the Middle East, said Schroeder, just days before the site was flooded. Each discovery made here has done nothing but highlight the site's unique importance. This place gets going about the same time as Gobekli Tepe, 11,600 years ago, right at the end of the Younger Dryas, stone enclosures. There are animals represented on stone slabs here. People say Gobekli Tepe, hunter-gatherers, there's no evidence of people living at the site. Well, this is one of the sites they lived at. Gobekli Tepe was their central place of pilgrimage from all around the area. And I'll be talking about more of this in my next video. The Natufians disappear. Well, these are the Natufians just carrying on and stepping it up a little. Here is their stone enclosure coming from the young, end of the Younger Dryas period. Here is a PDF I will leave below. It talks about Jerf El Amar, elliptical floor plans. Here are the bases of some single-cell, multi-nucleated circular houses with stone hearths. Here is a communal structure at Jerf El Amar, coming from over 11,000 years ago. These people were a lot more sophisticated than people give people at that time credit for, that is for sure. Here's one of the last structures they uncovered before the flooding started here, some sort of communal structure here, a circular enclosure with pillars set up around the inside at equal distance apart. These people had an eye for geometry. That's one thing I read about these people. And of course, a recent story on Gobekli Tepe and how that site was set up based on geometry. Can't ignore that. But they say this might have been built in the period right before Gobekli Tepe was started. And this here, kind of how it was based, the building of that place. The geometry was important. It says this building was not subdivided. Its only embellishment is an interior bench which backs onto the wall and continues around the entire interior. One meter wide, it forms a perfect equilateral hexagon that fits harmoniously into the circle of the building. At each angle of the hexagon, a thick wooden pillar covered with clay was set to hold up the roof. Here is an artist's conception of what these structures, 11,000 year old at least, look like at Jerf El Amar. The pillars held up roofs, so does that tell us that those stone pillars at Gobekli Tepe most likely held up roofs? Some similarity in design. The geometry was definitely incorporated, just like at Gobekli Tepe. And that story just came out a couple weeks ago. Here's a site plan on the left there. It talks about the decor here. It says this decor is hardly interrupted by the pillars because these are also decorated to preserve the continuity. The decor consists of several horizontal regular frieze of triangles in relief placed upwards the upper part of the stone plaques several stones are decorated with the undulating or broken lines and graffiti all engraved with a fine point on the upper edge one of the pillars preserve, preserved to a height taller than the top of the bench demonstrates that the decoration continues above wide multiple oblique striations form large chevrons and long vertical undulating lines invoke a serpent 
a frequent symbol at Jerf Alamar. Well, this place got lost 20 years ago, and it seems it has the same kind of decoration as Gobekli Tepe. Well, there was a major discovery made here in 1999, the House of the Oroch Skulls. And these were found in a small round house which had burned and concealed under its ruins evidence that was exceptionally well preserved. This consisted of three Oroch skulls, including the horns in the upper part of the skull, and the whole Oroch skull, whose position indicated that it had been hung on the walls. Here is an Oroch skull, and these were found at Chatelahoyuk in some of the homes, and I thought that was about as old as it got, about 7500 BC, but apparently this tradition started a lot earlier. It says a necklace of dry clay beads strung either side of the elongated limestone pendant was associated with one of the heads. A small hearth was encircled by numerous pounders, as well as a basalt axe with a polished cutting edge. This axe is, at present time, the oldest known polished axe. Here on the far right is that Oroch skull found at Jerf Alamar. Up at the top here, A and B, these are figures found on the pillars. Here are some Oroch horns at Chatelahoyuk 9,500 years ago. Seemed like this started about 2,000 years earlier. Here's a pic coming from the excavation. I know that's a little grainy. It says the communal building of the East Village, a meeting place with a bench, embellished by decorated stone slabs. Here is a pic of a burial at Jerf Elamar on the left without the head. And some heads were found on ceremonial stone fires. That's what they think. And of course, Gobekli Tepe and the Skull Cult has been talked about numerous times. On the right, intricate carving of a vulture. And of course, the vulture is associated with Pillar 43 at Gobekli Tepe. Here in the upper right, figure B, this is a stone slab engraved at Jerf Alamar. Here you see that serpent symbol right here. Very much like the serpent symbol on the back of this head figurine. Found it in the Valley Chorai. That is also underwater. I'm not sure what this represents up here. Very interesting. It talks about the symbolic code here coming from the Neolithic age. From this book, I just want to read this to sum it up. Danielle Stroder suggested that they appeared to evoke some kind of record and carry a message. Quite what that message was will remain unknown until we learn to decipher this Neolithic code. For that, we will need many more pictogram examples, but since Jerf Elamar is now below a lake, these will have to be found elsewhere. The closest examples to the Jerf Elamar pictograms that I have seen were engraved on stone pillars at a site line a further 100 kilometers to the north. This has no risk of being flooded as it is found on the summit of a limestone hill in southeast Turkey. It is known today as Gobekli Tepe, Excavations since 1994 have astonished the archaeological world and given further encouragement to those who wish to make Jericho and the Jordan Valley peripheral to the Neolithic origins. They talk about a connection to the Natufians, and Jerf El Amar seems to be a transitional site where the Natufians transitioned into the people that would carry on history around the Gobekli Tepe region. Jerf El Amar is one of the places where the people who built Gobekli Tepe came from. The symbolism here, the closest spot identified to it is Gobekli Tepe. It's nearby. A lot of things are the same. There's symbolism, vultures, serpents, pillars, geometry. This is where they came from. That's some literal lost history coming from this area of the world. Underwater today, but excavation was carried out. People knew the importance of that site, and that's good. It's right by Gobekli Tepe, maybe a two-day walk, three-day walk at the most. Seems to have some symbolism. And those seem to be the people that built Gobekli Tepe. It was a central pilgrimage area for people all around this area. More to come on that. Hope you thought that was cool, and you all have a very safe day.